Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Up, Up and Away. The memory verse is Romans 6 verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today's message is God's grace is the gift of eternal life. But I don't want to go to bed, complained David to his older sister. You know we all need to rest, Martha answered. We always will in this life. But when we get to heaven, we won't need to rest like we do now. How do you know? asked David. Let me tell you what I read in the Bible about Elijah and Elisha, David. Then you will understand too. God had something wonderful planned for Elijah. God wanted to take him straight to heaven without dying first. This was a special honor that God had given to only one other person, Enoch. Elisha was Elijah's assistant. Elisha knew that soon the prophet Elijah would end his work and it would be Elisha's time to carry on. Many of the prophets who worked with them also knew that Elijah would soon be leaving them. God's gentle voice had told them so. One day, Elijah took Elisha on a last journey to visit God's schools of the prophets. The prophets in these schools were asking Elisha, Did you know God is going to take Elijah today? Yes, I know. Elisha said. The thought of losing Elijah the prophet filled Elisha with sadness. He was probably a little nervous about taking over Elijah's work, too. Elijah also knew that he would soon be leaving Elisha. So he gave his helper a test. At each school they visited, Elijah told Elisha, Stay here. I need to go on. But each time, Elisha insisted on going too. He didn't want to let Elijah out of his sight. He wanted to be with him till the last moment. As the Lord surely lives, and as you live, I will not leave you, Elisha said. So the two of them walked on. Soon they came to the Jordan River. Elijah took off his coat, rolled it up, and hit the water with it. The water parted and the two men walked across on dry ground. On the other side, it was time to say goodbye. What can I do for you before I am taken from you? Elijah asked Elisha. Elisha could have asked for a lot of things. He could have asked for money. He could have asked to be famous. But instead, he asked for a special blessing. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, he answered. He knew that the only way he could do the work he had been called to do was with extra help from God. If you see me, when I am taken up from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, not, Elijah said, and they kept walking. Then suddenly, a chariot and horses of fire appeared and separated the two men. Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha called after him, My father! My father! The chariots and horsemen of Israel! But Elijah was gone. Elisha tore his clothes to show his sorrow at losing his teacher and friend. Then Elisha saw Elijah's coat where it had fallen. He picked it up, and walked back to the Jordan River. Rolling up the coat, Elisha hit the water with it, just as Elijah had done. Again, the waters parted, and Elisha walked across on dry ground. God had indeed given Elisha the gift of his spirit. God wants to give us good gifts, too. His very best gift is the gift that he gave Elijah the gift of eternal, forever life. And like Elisha, 
we have to ask for the gift. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus, just as Elisha had to keep his eyes on Elijah. And we have to believe our prayers have been answered and act in faith. We have to believe just as Elisha did when he hit the water with Elijah's coat. Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in great pastures. He leads me beside quiet quarters. He restores my son. He leads me in rushes and for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of them, I will fear no evil for you and me. The Lord and your son, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You are not my head with oil. The cup overflow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms chapter 23, verse 1, and it says, My Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, and it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, and it says, Children, it is your first duty to obey your parents, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with the promise. Amen.
future now I trust in him A brighter future I know Because when he lives I have a future One thing for sure I know children welcome to kids corner today we are privileged to have children from holy star academy wow holy star academy children you're most welcome i want to let the children who are watching this program today every day same time same place we are here always for you telling you nice stories singing for you you are going to see these children singing they're going to tell you poems they're going to tell you a lot of things you don't want to miss tell your neighbor or whoever is outside to come inside and watch this program you don't want to miss but before we start i want to let you know my name my name is betty teacher betty teacher nana you can call me whatever name you want and I'm here today with a story. Do you want to hear the story today? Yes. Yes. The story today comes from the book of Genesis chapter 37, 39, 40, and 41. That is where our story is coming from. And before we say our story, I'll ask one of us to give us an opening prayer. Who is going to pray for us? Yes. Let's pray. Our kind of everlasting master, as we are going to start this session, we ask for your guidance, we ask for your application, mighty Father. Give us, <coughs> give us understanding, O oh Lord. And in Jesus' name, I can believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ingrid, for that wonderful prayer. And now I want you to let you know that our story comes from the Bible, okay? Yes. And I've given it a title saying that from prison to palace. Can you imagine? You are in prison and you find yourself in Paris. That is what we are going to learn about. And the ty I mean the, the character that we are going to talk about, the person we are going to talk about is none other than Joseph. Have you ever read about Joseph? Yes. What do you know about Joseph? Just tell me what one thing that you know that is so special about David. I mean Joseph. Yes? He was a dreamer. He was a dreamer. Wow, yes, you guys know the Bible. Yeah. 11, 11 brothers. He had 11 brothers? Yes. He was the most loved by his father. He was the most loved by his father. So you guys know the story. So that is the person we are going to talk about. Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. Yeah. His, yes. ma his father was Jacob and his mother was Rachel. Remember Jacob had how many wives? Two, Two wives. wives. He had Rachel and he and had who? Leah. 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 And Rachel is the one who gave birth to Joseph. Joseph. He, she had two children, Joseph and Benjamin. Benjamin. Hey, okay, you are, you are now challenging me. Now, Joseph 
uh, was one of the most beloved son of Jacob. Jacob loved Joseph so much that one day he made him a very, very nice coat. You know how you make a nice thing and you give it to someone you love? Yes. He made a coat with so many wonderful colors and he presented it to Joseph. Do you know how his brothers felt? They felt so jealousy about it. They didn't love him because daddy always loved Joseph more than. But I know that the reason maybe Joseph was loved, he was also very obedient. Isn't it so? Yes. Yeah. Even us at home, when we have bad manners, we have bad manners. Do you think mommy will love you more? No. no. So if everybody wants a child that is obedient oh, yes. i'm not saying we don't love you we love you all you're all our children whether you're obedient or not but special a special child is the one who will be obedient oh, yes. so joseph was obedient joseph loved god and joseph daddy jacob loved joseph so much so one day joseph started dreaming as one of us said he's a dreamer he started dreaming and every time his dreams showed that the brothers and the father they will bow down to him. to him and also this made the brother to hate him more you know one day even they asked you mean you want to tell us that you'll be our boss one day and we shall go, come bending down to you so joseph always could dream but always his dreams were true as we are going to see in the story so one day the father sent the boys the 10 boys away to go and take care of the ship so they were there and then time came, the father thought that the food they went with got finished. So whom does he send? Joseph. Joseph. Because he didn't allow Joseph to go. He loved Joseph. Joseph and Benjamin, they could not go. So they were at home. So he sent Joseph. Joseph, go check on your brothers. And Joseph started the journey to go to find his brothers where they were taking care of the ship, maybe far away. And then he would reach there. They saw him from far. And then, oh, the dream has come. The dream has wow. come. And they planned. They were like, mm, this boy, today we are going to show him a lesson. Today, to, to, we have to kill him. We will tell our daddy that animals ate him. And this is, you know, that is what they planned. And they started planning in advance. So the time Joseph was arriving where the brothers are, they had already made a what? A plan yeah. on how they are going to do what? To kill him. Yeah. Poor Joseph. He didn't know for him. He's so happy to see his brothers. And for them, they are just planning bad things. But one of the brothers, Reuben, he, didn't, he said, no, we can't kill our, our yeah. brother. Let us put him in a hole, in a pit somewhere so that... You know, he can stay there, but we can't kill him. But they, they, what they did was to put him in the pit. As they had put him in the pit, they saw Ishmael, you know, they, these were traders. They were coming, and they were coming, going where? To Egypt. Egypt. So they were on their way going. They saw this caravan of so many people, and then they said, wow, we have gotten a... So one of them said, no, I have a tree, I have a plan. We are not killing Joseph, but we are going to do what? To sell him. So they sold him to who? To the Ishmaels. And they took him where? To Egypt. And then they got his coat, put blood all over. They killed the animal there and put blood. And they took the coat to the father. And they lied him, poor man, that your, your son was eaten by wild animals. Can you imagine how Jacob felt? Your loved, beloved son... Jacob felt so sad. He was feeling like the world has come to an end. In fact, the Bible says he mourned his son. He said, I will mourn my son until the grave. But God is so faithful. When God is with you, he will always take care of you wherever you yeah. go. So he was there. When he went, he was sold to a man. His, his name was Potiphar. And so Joseph became a slave in Potiphar's house wow. but joseph was so handsome so handsome that even the, the wife of potiphar looked at him and he admired him can you imagine that was so evil yeah yes. and he even wanted to rape him but joseph ran away and while he's running away the wife took the coat from him and then he, he made he, she starts, she started shouting people came and she's like joseph was raping me and imagine she was lying and that is how Joseph ended up in prison. prison. Joseph was taken to prison. Imagine Potiphar was so disappointed in Joseph, but not knowing that the wife was 
lies. lies. She told lies. So Joseph was in prison. But all this time, because Joseph stood for her, his God, God was with Joseph. He always say, I cannot do anything that is not right before my God. God. Joseph didn't care whether someone was watching him. He didn't care whether mommy is watching you boys. You like seeing, hey, mommy is there. Let me not do this. Uh-uh. For Joseph, where he was, no mommy, no daddy. But he always obeyed because he knew God is doing what? He's, He's watching. watching. God watches whatever we do. So Joseph, that is how he ended up in prison. And in prison, he found a baker there, some of the people that were also arrested there. And this baker also had a dream. So Joseph interpreted the dream and it was true, it came to pass. And this baker, when he went out of the prison, he remembered one day, uh, the, the king of Egypt, his name was Pharaoh. Wow. Pharaoh one day dreamt a dream and he was so disturbed he didn't sleep the whole night. Remember the baker that was in prison is now working at Pharaoh's house. Wow. So now the baker, when everybody was called and people could not interpret the dream, then the baker remembered that there was a man who interpreted his dream when he was in, in prison. prison. So he remembered Joseph. And Joseph was called from the prison and was brought to the palace and he stood before the king. I can imagine, you know, the way he looked. But God was with Joseph all the time. Even in the prison, he was made to be the ruler in the prison. And now is in Potiphar's before Potiphar and Potiphar says, you know, I dreamt a dream. So Potiphar interprets, I mean, talks and says the dream. And then do you know what Joseph interpreted the dream? And he told the king, King uh, Pharaoh, that there was famine that was going to do what? To, yes. to come. And so he was telling him how we have to correct food. And he told him, king, please choose someone who will correct Food. And then the king was like, you are the only man that I can put in charge of that. And the story tells us that imagine Joseph was put to be second to Potiphar. Imagine Potiphar is the king. Now this one was like what? Seme is the president. Potiphar is the president. Who is next to the president? The deputy, the deputy president. president. Now this man prison from prison, he became the second to the, to the king. king and from that time the story tells us that joseph was with god and god was with joseph yes. and the reason is because joseph was obedient joseph always even where he went he was always obedient, obedient. so i want to let you girls and boys know one thing that when you're obedient and when you walk with god god will never leave you neither forsake you. He said he will be with you wherever, wherever you go. Our memory verse today comes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. Can we say it? The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. I want the boys who are watching us today to know that God does not leave you. When you obey him, he will always walk with you. He will never leave you, no forsake you. Even as boys and girls, whenever you find that you are in a problem or you are scared of something, remember God is so what do you have to do is just to pray and God will come in your rescue. He will come your way. He will answer your prayers. He will be with you. But he wants you to be obedient. Yes. To be obedient yes. and keep his command. Yes. And now can we sing our memory text to the children who are watching us today? We have a song for you and it comes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you. The Lord himself goes before you, he will be with you, he will not leave you, nor forsake you, not be or be dismayed. The Lord himself goes before you, he will be with you, do turn on me that you want to say. Again, the Lord himself. Do 
not be all dismayed. The Lord Himself goes before you. He will be with you. You shall know me that He will bless you again. The Lord Himself goes before you. You. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not feel dismayed. The Lord Himself goes before you. He will be with you. You shall know me that He will bless it. Amen. I want to let the children who are watching us today, same time, same place, don't miss to watch this program. And today I want you to go with this in your mind. This is the hope that the Lord is giving to you, that the Lord will be with you. He will never leave you, neither forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. May the Lord bless you. Come again. And someone has to pray for us. Who is going to pray for us and give us a closing prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you this day. We thank you for the story that you have learned of us. May it please be with us and make us to be obedient people. So it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we say bye to those children? Bye. 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 Same time, same place. God bless you. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called The Face of an Angel. The memory verse is from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. It says, Let us not give up meeting together, but let us encourage one another. Today's message is Believers Encourage One Another to Grow in Faith. One Sabbath, the pastor told the church that Brother Santana's wife was in the hospital. Pedro and Sarita wanted to encourage Brother and Sister Santana, so they made a pretty card. Mother helped them write a note in the card. They helped make some food to take to the Santana's home. The Santanas were so happy. Pedro and Sarita were happy, too. They had encouraged their friends. A long time ago, another church had people who needed help. Today's Bible story tells how they were encouraged. The apostles were very, very busy. Many believers were joining the new church. Some of the believers were widows. Others were elderly. All needed food and care. The apostles couldn't preach and teach and give out food, too. So the believers chose seven men to help. They called these men deacons. Stephen was one of those deacons. Richly blessed by God, he comforted and encouraged the people. He made them think of Jesus. And God gave him power to do great miracles. Everyone in the church loved Stephen. However, some leaders in the church didn't love him. They hated his teachings about Jesus. Stephen's words were so powerful that these men couldn't argue with him. They decided that they had to stop him. What could they do? They decided to pay some men to tell lies about Stephen. The lies upset everybody, the ordinary people, and some teachers of the law. The leader sent men to bring Stephen to a meeting, and they had the liars come too, so they could accuse him. The leaders watched Stephen carefully. They expected him to be nervous or worried. Instead, Stephen's face glowed. The Bible says his face looked like the face of an angel. The high priest glared at Stephen. Are these things true? he growled. He was speaking of the lies that had been told about Stephen. Stephen didn't answer yes or no. Instead, he began to tell the story of the Jewish people. He told about God's plan for sending a Savior to the world. First, Stephen reminded them of God's promise to Abraham. 
Then he talked about Abraham's son Isaac, and Isaac's son Jacob, and Jacob's son Joseph, who through God's power became a ruler in Egypt. Stephen reminded the leaders how God had used Joseph to protect Jacob's family during the terrible famine. Then Stephen reminded them of Moses. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, but our ancestors turned against Moses. You stubborn Jewish leaders, he said. You have not given your hearts to God. You won't even listen to him. You do not hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you. Your ancestors were like this, and you are just like them. Your fathers tried to hurt every prophet who ever lived. Those prophets said long ago that the righteous one would come, but your fathers killed them. And now you have turned against the righteous one and killed him. That did it. Everyone started shouting at once, but Stephen stayed calm. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he was looking up. He saw something that no one else could see. Look, I see heaven open, and I see the Son of Man standing at God's right side. The leaders covered their ears with their hands and ran for Stephen. They dragged him through the streets all the way outside the city. There they tore off their coats, and they threw stones at Stephen. Stephen died calmly, just as Jesus did. He didn't fight against the Jewish leaders. He fell on his knees and cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. After this prayer of mercy, he died. Stephen encouraged the believers as he cared for their needs. The Holy Spirit filled him with love for others. The Holy Spirit wants us to help and encourage others as Stephen did. This podcast is read by Fanita Buddy for Gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. For more information, please visit Gracelink.net. Shalom.